Welcome to the lecture series on numerical methods and uh, till now we have discussed about this uh, finite difference operators. So, now we will uh, continue about this uh, central difference table and uh, we will start about the central difference uh, approximations how we can use for different values here. So, in the tabular form if we will just write the central difference table here, the central difference can be written as if I will just write i as the value here, there is a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 here and uh, the respective tabular values are like uh, x i here, then I can just write this uh, tabular points as x 0, x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 here and associated variable values are like y 0, y 1, y 2, y 3, y 4 here then the central difference approximator approximates that delta of y i as since we are just expressing delta of f of x as f of x plus h by 2 minus f of x minus h by 2. I can just write delta of y r as y of r plus half minus y of r minus half here. So, if I am just expressing this one in this form, then I can write this first approximation as delta y of half here. Then second approximation I can just write since we are just considering the average of uh, these two here. So, first average if I will just consider 1 plus 0 by 2 since uh, delta of y r means delta of y of half here. So, delta of y of half means y of half plus half this will just give you y 1 minus y of half minus half means this is just giving you y 0 there. So, that is why we if you are just taking the difference of these two here, then we can just write that as delta of y of half here. If you will just take the difference of y 2 minus y 1, I can just write delta y of 3 by 2 here and for y 3 minus y 2, I can just write delta y of 5 by 2 here. If I will just take the difference of these two, I can just write delta y of 7 by 2 here. Since delta of y by y of 3 by 2, I can just write this one as in the form of y of 3 by 2 plus half minus y of 3 by 2 minus half here. So, it can be written as y of 3 plus 1 by 2 here minus y of 3 minus 1 by 2 here. So, it can be written as y 2 minus y 1 here. So, obviously, y 2 minus y 1 it is just written as delta of y of minus 3 by 2 here. Similarly, y 1 minus y 0 it can be written as delta y of half here. And if we are just taking the difference of y 3 minus y 2, it can be represented as a delta y of 5 by 2 here. And if you will just take the difference of y 4 minus y 3, it can be expressed as a delta y of 7 by 2. Again, if you will take the difference of these two here, so it can be expressed as a delta square of y i here and I can just write this one as a delta of y 1 here. Since if you will just take the average of uh, y of sorry this is delta square of y of 1 here. If I am just uh, assuming this one, this means that delta of delta of y of 1 here. So, if I will just take delta of y 1, so delta of y 1 I can just write as y of uh, 1 minus half sorry plus half minus y of 1 minus half here and it can obviously written as y of 1 plus half minus delta y of 1 minus half here. And I can just write this one as a delta of y of 1 plus half sorry, I can just write this one as y of 1 plus half plus half minus y of 1 plus half minus half here. Similarly, minus it can be written as y of 1 minus half plus half minus y of 1 minus half minus half here. So, obviously, it can be written as 1 plus 1 this is a y 2 minus y 1 since it can cancel it out. So, directly I can just write this one as y 2 minus y 1 minus y 1 minus y 0. So, if you will just see 
this del square of y1 is nothing but you, we can just write y2 minus y1 minus y1 minus y0 here. So, obviously, this is just coming as del square of y1 here. Similarly, we can just uh, write this difference of uh, these two as del square of uh, y2 here and the difference of these two we can just write del square of y3 here. If we will just take the difference of again these two here, so it can be written in the form of a del q of y i here. So, I can just uh, write this one as a del q of y of 3 by 2 and this one can be written as a del q of y of 5 by 2 here. If I will take one more difference here del to the power 4 of y y here. So, then I can just write del to the power 4 of y 2 here. Since if we are just taking the central difference form here, so the values are associated here as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and the central value is taking as 2 here. So, that is why the final form the central difference approximator approximates the value at the center of the table only. So, next we will uh, discuss about this uh, Newton's forward difference formula. Basically, we are just using the set of tabular points that is in the form of here as x0, x1, x2 up to xn here and all of these tabular points that is x0 to xn are equally spaced. This means that x0, x1, x2, x3 likewise we are just writing up to xn here. This means that if all points are equally spaced we can just write xi equals to xi minus 1 plus h here or we can just write this one as x1 equals to x0 plus h, x2 equals to x1 plus h likewise xn equals to xn minus 1 plus h here. And we can just write all these points that is in the form of like x0, x1, x2, x3 up to xn. If these are the given set of tabular points, we can just uh, express all these points should be equally spaced. This means that h is the space size in that locations. Then we can express this associated variable values as y0, y1 up to yn there. Then we can express this Newton's forward difference formula. as y of x p. This means that any particular point if we want to evaluate at any of the middle of this intervals, then we can just write this formula as in the form of y 0 plus p delta of y 0 p into p minus 1 by factorial 2 del square of y 0. So, up to p into p minus 1 into p minus 2 up to p minus n minus 1 divided by n factorial and uh, del to the power n y 0 here. So, basically if we want to evaluate any point within this particular interval, then we can just express this point as x p as x 0 plus p h here. And if we want to express this function in the form of a polynomial we can just uh, replace at any point x means we can just replace this p as in the form of x there and we can evaluate this formula in the form of a polynomial there. So, in a complete form if we want to derive this formula then we can take this Taylor series x function which is a used for uh, this shift operator. So, if we want to express uh, this uh, Newton's forward difference formula in the form of p here, this means that Newton's forward difference formula can be written as y of x p that is at any point within this interval x0, x1 to up to xn, if we want to find at any point, 
then we can just write this formula as in the form of y0 p delta of y0 p into p minus 1 by factorial 2 del square of y0 plus up to p into p minus 1 up to p minus n minus 1 by n factorial del to the power n of y0 there. Especially if we will just see in the tabular point here, this is starting at x0, x1, x2, x3 up to xn here. So, if any point we want to evaluate at the beginning of the table, we can use Newton's forward difference formula here. Basically, if we are just writing this uh, point as x, this means that x has a coefficient there. So, that is why we are just expressing that is in the form of xp here. So, usually xp can be written as x0 plus ph since all of these points we are just expressing that is in the form of xi equals to xi minus 1 plus h here. And wherever we will just start this computation, we have to choose the beginning of the point as x0 there since this p value should be lies between 0 and 1 here. Especially if you will just consider then we can just evaluate this formula, formula there. This means that if we want to find y of xp in a functional form here, we can just write this one as y of x0 plus p h and it can be expressed as e to the power p of y0 there and uh, e can be expressed in the form of 1 plus delta here. Since whenever we are just expressing delta of f of x, usually it is written in the form of f of x plus h minus f of x and hence it can be written as e of f of x minus f of x and it can be written as e minus 1 of f of x there. So, delta can be expressed as e minus 1. So, that is why we can just write 1 plus delta equals to e there. So, that is why we can just replace here e as 1 plus delta whole power p of y0 here. And if you will just expand this term, then we can just write this one as uh, 1 plus p delta plus p into p minus 1 by factorial 2 plus p into p minus 1 into p minus 2 by 3 factorial delta square here, this is delta q here. So, likewise it will just continue and operated on this y0 value. So, I can just write these values as y0 plus p delta of y0 plus p into p minus 1 by 2 factorial del square of y0 likewise I can just express. And if I want to evaluate this function in a polynomial form that is in the form of x there, I can just uh, express this as I can express this uh, p in the form of here since uh, x is expressed xp as expressed as x0 plus p h here. So, this xp is nothing but any point which is existing within this interval x0, x1, x2, up to xn in any of these intervals. So, this xp is situated. So, commonly we can just consider this point as x there. So, which can be expressed as x0 plus p h and I can just write p as x minus x0 by h there. Similarly, if I want to write p minus 1, this can be written as x minus x0 by h minus 1 here and which can be written as x minus x0 minus h by h here, where I can just write x minus x1 by h here, since x1 can be expressed as x0 plus h here. Similarly, I can just uh, write p minus 2 that is in the form of x minus x2 by h there. In each of these formulations, I can just express this one in the form of p. If I will just replace p in terms of x there, I can just obtain a polynomial that is in the form of x there. So, if it is asked to evaluate any polynomial which is existing at any point which is existing at the beginning of the table, then we can express that as a polynomial of x in Newton's forward difference formula.
So, this is the Newton's forward difference formula whatever I have just discussed uh, then we will just uh, go for this uh, Newton's backward difference formula. In the Newton's backward difference formula especially we are just uh, using this tabular values at the end of the table only. So, if you will discuss about Newton's backward difference formula especially if the set of tabular points are uh, expressed in the form of uh, x0, x1, x2 up to xn and the corresponding associated values are y0, y1, y, y2 up to yn and each of these points are equispaced. This means that uh, x0 minus x1 difference will be h and x2 minus x1 difference will be h. Then we can just write Newton's backward difference formula as y of xp as y0 plus p nabla of y0 p into p plus 1 by factorial 2 nabla square of y0 p into p plus 1 of 2 p plus n minus 1 by n factorial nabla to the power n of y0 we have to choose y0 in such a fashion that y0 should be existing at the end of the table. So, previous values can be considered as y of minus 1, y of minus 2 up to y of minus n there. Since this value y0 will exist at the end of the table only and we can express here xp or x as x0 plus ph there where p can be written as x minus x0 by h in that position also. And if we want to express this function in a form of shift operator here, this means that y of x p can be written as e power p y 0 here, since x p can be expressed as x 0 plus p h and where we can just write e of x p means e of x0 plus ph which can be expressed as e to the power p of x0 here. So, since we are just uh, expressing this function that is e of f of xp here or e of xp means it is e of x0 plus ph here. So, if we want to express this one that is y as a function of x here that means y of x0 plus p h here and e is operated on y of p here. So, that is why it is written as e to the power p of y0 this one. So, that is why if we want to express this one as in the form of e to the power p of y0 here. So, it can be expressed as in the form of nabla here that is usually nabla of f of x is written in the form of f of x minus f of x minus h and it can be expressed as f of x minus e power of minus 1 of f of x so this one. So, I can just write 1 minus e inverse of f of x. So, this can be written in the form of like a nabla equals to 1 minus e inverse or I can just write this one as e inverse equals to 1 minus nabla here and e can be written as 1 minus nabla whole inverse. So, if I will just write here this can be written in the form of 1 minus nabla whole to the power minus p of y 0 and it can be expanded in the form of like 1 plus p nabla plus p into p plus 1 by factorial 2 nabla square. So, likewise operated on y0 here. So, in a combined form I can just write y0 plus p nabla of y0 p into p plus 1 by factorial 2 nabla square y0 plus this will just continue. So, this is the representation for uh, Newton's backward difference formula and uh, if we will just write this is in the form of a polynomial here. So, then we can just uh, estimate this series as in the form of uh, like p equals to x minus x0 by h here. 
So, similarly I can just express p plus 1 as p equals to x minus x 0 by h here. So, p plus 1 can be written as x minus x 0 by h plus 1, this can be written as x minus x 0 plus h by h here this one. So, I can just write x minus x 0 minus h by h, I can just write x minus x of minus 1 by h this one. Similarly, I can just write p plus 2 also there. So, p plus 2 can be written as x minus x of minus 2 by h there. And in this form, we can just express this as in the form of a polynomial that is taking all of this uh, backward points. So, whenever we are just uh, discussing this uh, Newton's uh, forward difference formula or Newton's backward difference formula, there is always existing a error term there. Since whenever we are just writing this series expansion, so finally we are ended off these terms up to nth term there. So, after the nth term, so there will be some extra terms are there which we are just neglecting there. So, if that terms we will just include, so in a complete form we can just write this series expansion as y of x equals to your series expansion that is y of x p plus r n term there that is the remainder term. So, in each like Newton's forward difference formula, backward difference formula always there will be a associated error there. So, if we want to calculate this error, first we will discuss about a generalized error approximated formula here. So, if you will just write this uh, error of approximations, so let us consider suppose a function y equals to f of x is existing at k plus 1 point suppose that is x 0, x 1 up to x k and x k plus 1 points and each of these points, this functional values will be associated also like y 0, y 1, y 2 up to y k plus 1. Then if y of x is satisfied at exactly these points with a polynomial, since we are just discussing this one in a polynomial sense here. So, y of x is approximated with p of x at x 0, x 1, x 2 up to x k here, since k plus points, k plus 1 points are existing. Then if we will just approximate this function here, that is y equals to f of x is a function which is approximated or interpolated with a polynomial p of x here at exactly at these points like x 0, x 1, x 2 up to x k points each at each of these points the difference between this uh, y equals to f of x and p of x is exactly 0. But at all other points we can just find a difference is uh, existing. So, if this difference is existing then there will be a error term is associated with each of this function and the polynomial whenever the we are just approximating them, them in a uh, polynomial sense here. So, if we will just write this in a complete form, so y of x can be written as p of x plus r of x term here. So, usually this y of x and p of x exactly equals at each of these nodal points or tabular points. But at all other points, there exists a difference between this y of x and p of x where r of x is existing. So, if we will just write here r of x as in the form of like k x into w of x, since at all of these tabular points, we are just approximating that f of x equals to p of x there, y equals to f of x. So, if exactly it will be equal at these points, so this function should be 0 at exactly these points also. So, that is why we can just express this r x term as in the form of k x into w x, where w x will be associated with this term like x minus x 0, x minus x 1, x minus x 2 up to x minus x k, where we can just satisfy y of x i equals to p of x i plus r of x i. But if we will just approximate this function exactly at these points, we can just uh, consider a point which is existing within this interval suppose x bar at that point, this function is also satisfying that x bar value. So, if you will just consider that function as x bar value, so we can just choose k x as k x bar at that point exactly that k of x bar equals to f of x bar minus p of x bar by w of x bar. Since at that point, 
these values will not satisfy maybe that point lies here or here or here somewhere else it may lies since exactly at these points we are just observing that y of x p of x and w of x takes the zero value we are just considering x bar as a point within this interval somewhere that should satisfy the value that is in the form of k of x bar equals to f of x bar minus p of x bar by w of x bar there. So, we can just approximate this function that at that point exactly f of x equals to p of x plus w of x into k of x bar. So, where we can just write this remainder term r of x as w of x into k of x bar. So, if we want to determine the value of k of x bar, let us consider this function that as phi of x equals to f of x minus p of x minus f of x bar minus p of x bar by w of x bar into w of x. Since w of x takes the values that exactly f of x and p of x are satisfied at x 0, x 1 to x n there. So, if these are the k plus 1 points where phi of x satisfies this value, then we can just assume that phi of x will be satisfy 0 value at k plus 2 points since x bar is the extra point there. So, if x bar is the extra point and x 0, x 1, 2 up to x k are k plus 1 points, then phi function will satisfy 0 value at k plus 2 points. So, if you will just consider in a polynomial sense that is satisfying rules theorem, phi of x will vanish, vanish at k plus 2 points, and then phi dash x must vanish at k plus 1 points. Similarly, if you will just go ahead, we can just find that phi of k plus 1 will vanish at 1 point only. Suppose that point is zeta, suppose. Since p of x is a polynomial of highest degree k, so if you will take k plus 1th derivative, p of x will be also 0. Similarly, f of x will be also 0 at that point. But phi of k plus 1, since at least at 1 point, the k plus 1th derivative of phi function that will give you also a 0 function there. So, that is why we can just write phi of k plus 1 zeta equals to 0. So, then we can just express f of x bar minus p of x bar by w of x bar this equals to f to the power k plus 1 zeta by k plus 1 factorial. So, if you will just compare both these equations that is expressed as equation 4 and equation 7, we can just get that k of x bar can be expressed as f to the power k plus 1 zeta by k plus 1 factorial. In a complete sense, if we want to write this function or this uh, remainder term, so r of x can be expressed in the form of w of x into f to the power k plus 1 zeta by k plus 1 factorial here. So, if I am just writing here r of x, this can be written as w of x into f to the power k plus 1 zeta by k plus 1 factorial here, where zeta should be lies between x 0 to x k here. And uh, w x term is written in the form of x minus x 0, x minus x 1 up to x minus x k here into f to the power k plus 1 zeta by k plus 1 factorial here. So, if we are just expressing this generalized error function that is expressed in the form of like x minus x 0, x minus x 1 to x minus x k into f to the power k plus 1 zeta by k plus 1 factorial here, where zeta should lies between x 0 and x k. So, next class we will just continue this function that can be expressed at central difference table points and we can just approximate these values in a central difference approximation approximated form. That central difference approximation terms includes like a Gauss forward difference formula, backward difference formula and Wessel's formula and Stallings formula. That we will just continue in the next lecture.